there are moments where the astrology aligns with what happens culturally during the year in ways that are fairly profound. There are moments that remind us in a million different ways that we need to be the ones to reparent ourselves. Now, there are moments that remind us that we are adults and whatever happened in the past happened and it's up to us to meet our needs in each and every way that we can. Hey y'all, if you're looking for intel on 2024, check out your 2024 guidebook. This 100 plus page digital resource examines the year's astrological moments in detail and provides sign specific activities to support you through every twist and turn. You can order yours at channy.com. It is an invaluable resource for the year. Hello and welcome. This is the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Channy Nicholas. And in this episode, we are talking about the week of December 25th, which just so happens to have a big old full moon in Cancer right at the beginning of the week. December 26th, it officially arrives. But of course, we feel these things as they roll in. And Cancer is a sign that is all about family and nourishment and nurturing and caring for and building bonds with one another and safety and protection. The waters of Cancer are the waters of the womb. They are the waters of creation. Cancer is a water sign. It is a cardinal sign. It initiates us into feeling. It reminds us of how sensitive and vulnerable we are, which is why we always talk about how much cancer cries, because it has access to that vulnerability. And when we have a full moon in cancer, we too, all of us, doesn't matter if we have cancer in our chart, we all have cancer in our chart, we all have every sign in our chart, but it doesn't matter if we have a planet in cancer or a point in cancer or whatever in cancer, it doesn't matter. When a full moon in cancer rolls through, emotions rise like the tides. So you can bet that this week, the beginning of this week, will have an extra dose of feeling. And that's not a bad thing. In fact, if I can separate out this astrology from everything else, which I can't do because everything happens at the same time and we contain multitudes and so does the astrology always, But if we could just take this one piece of the astrology of this week and say that this is a gorgeous full moon. This is a moon in its own sign, which makes it really potent because it's very comfortable there. It's resourced and it's sitting in this exact sextile to Jupiter, which is the planet of plenty and it's the planet of abundance and it's in a sign, Taurus, that the moon has a special relationship to. The moon is exalted in Taurus. So the moon's like, oh, I know that. I, I love being, I can help you out. And then the moon is in the sign that Jupiter's exalted in, Cancer. So there is this reception between the two of a really high standard, in a sense, and of being in a position of... We could almost say authority or a position of praise, a position of being able to offer something. And so I think this is a signature of us being able to offer to ourselves the generosity and the nourishment and the care that we need and therefore extend that to everyone else. Maybe, maybe a little bit of that, maybe a lot of it, who knows, but it does feel like an abundance of sweetness and material support. I say material because the moon represents the body and therefore the physical experience of our life. It's the body of the person that birthed us, that conceived us. It's our body. It's that kind of lineage. So it's a lot about family, cancer. The moon is a lot about the body. It is about how the body holds emotion. This might be a time where 
perhaps you're spending time with family or thinking about family and there's some kind of healing that happens. There's some kind of abundance. There's some kind of support there that maybe you don't normally feel. Maybe you do. But for those of us that have a tendency to feel, because of our experience, unsupported, this could be a moment where we are feeling the opposite or we're experiencing the opposite in a literal kind of way. Again, because the moon deals with a type of physicality and because Jupiter is in Taurus, a earth sign, there's a sense of or it looks like there's a reflection here where there is an abundance of support emotionally, physically, in terms of our nourishment. So I always think that like when that is the sign in the sky, I want to make sure I'm facilitating that for myself because then I can ride the wave of it. There's like extra encouragement because of the astrology or I feel extra encouraged because of that to remember how much I have and how much I have to share and how much I can give myself. It's like saturating ourselves with the hydration, the, the care, deep, 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 deep care or care that seeps in so deeply that we just know we're cared for. What would it be like to walk through the world feeling loved? I know some of you do. Some of you have had that experience of someone when you were little just loved you and was like, you're amazing. And maybe they're still around and maybe you have a lot of those experiences. And unfortunately, I think too many of us don't have those experiences and we walk around feeling a sense of lack and a sense of loneliness and an inability to understand that we belong here because we're here. We're valuable because we're alive. We deserve everything we need because that's just our right being here. So I'm hoping that this full moon is reflecting a time where, again, we can tap into the ways in which we can serve ourselves, saturate ourselves with nourishment, and therefore show up to maybe a family function, maybe a friend function, maybe a dinner, maybe a gathering, whatever's going on this week and even into next week, show up with a sense of being filled up, coming with a full cup, not needing to pull from, but maybe even being able to offer to in the ways that are good for me, you know? All right, that's just the full moon. That's the first couple of days of the week, but I do think it permeates the rest of the week. It's a big full moon. Every I always say that full moons are just big moments. And this one is not in a negative relationship with anything that is a problem. Or better yet, we can say that this moon has a protective shield around it and something that it's offering us. So again, I hope that ripples throughout the week. And there's a reason why I hope it ripples throughout the week, because by the time we also get to Tuesday the 26th, the other story is happening. And the other story goes like this. There's a confusing conversation. There's a little bit of a Mercury retrograde moment. There's a blip. There's a dip in communication. Something goes missing. Information, itinerary, travel goes funky. Something happens that is foggy and where all the details are not clear. That's on Tuesday. The same day as the full moon. Two things can be true at once. We are a very complex universe. And uh, on Wednesday, another two things are happening. The sun makes a trine to Jupiter. Really positive, really buoyant, extra confident, love it. And also Mercury and Mars make a conjunction. This is a conversation that's challenging. It could feel like a lot of conflict. It could sound like a challenge. It could be the thing that gets your goat, so to speak. And it could entice you into either saying the thing that needs to be said, controversy, who cares, or 
could trick you into getting into wasting energy and time fighting with people that there's just no reason to. I don't know. It, it rolls out how we need to. I'm not saying that having a challenging conversation is bad because it's not. We need to do that too. And because Mercury and then, I don't know what this is, Mercury and then Mars both make a square to Neptune before and after that, it seems like there's a lot that's foggy here. And so we're fighting about things that we might not know anything about or we have misinformation about or there's there's a cloudiness around the conflict and that's always a tricky place to be in. So it feels a little tricky. Now, this isn't going to land for everybody personally. You might not feel this at all. So don't go into the week worrying about it. I do want you to remember all of the sweet things that are happening. But I also want you to just be clocking anything that feels like this might be a trick. You know, sometimes when you're with that family member or even with that friend that tends to pull you into a conversation that you're like, I swore next time I saw this person, I was not going to do this. But somehow this kind of astrology is like, mm, they might get you to do it though. <laughs> so it's, it's not bad. It's just something that you got to keep an eye on. Or if you're listening to this in retrospect, you can be like, ah, yes, I did fall hook, line, and sinker for that. Or I got to call myself out for my own inappropriate or unuseful ways of communicating a really delicate topic or something that ended up being maybe not so useful of a way to say something. But again, even as Mars makes that square to Neptune on Thursday, the 28th, Venus is also making a sextile to Pluto, which is strengthening for relationships in a way. It's deepening. So everything that's challenging this week is also met with something that is really supportive and a little bit of vice versa. And then we get to the weekend. The weekend is a moment where we go through a couple of shifts. Venus moves into Sag, which is quite encouraging. Venus in Sagittarius is very adventurous. It's it's very romance on the run type of like rom-com. And it also enters into the part of the sky where Mercury and Mars are. So it's going to help to soften the contentiousness. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just that's what Venus does. Generally, it helps us to come to a consensus. But that Mercury-Mars conjunction wants honesty. But then the squares to Neptune don't and cloud things. So, you know, just beware of people-pleasing but also having all the facts straight. Again, if this <laughs> falls, lands in your life in a way that feels really personal. Then on Saturday, Jupiter stations direct, which I think is a really nice note to end the year on because the planet of plenty, the planet of abundance, the planet of bringing us some goodwill and helping us to trust in life is stationing direct, which means it's going forward, which means it's pulling focus. And I'm all about being focused on that after a week that's a really mixed situation. So it's a stabilizing kind of force. It's Jupiter. It's Santa Claus, fairy godmother. It is a non-denominational spirit of goodwill. It is any kind of sprite or fairy or energy of prosperity that you want to call it. Jupiter is the bringer of gifts because it is about generosity. So as it stations direct at the very end of the year, it's again helping us to focus on what has been good and how to build abundance in a slow and steady and attainable kind of way. And that's what we enter the year with. Next week, Mercury is going to station direct on January 1st, which I think is really kind of cool. It's still in a wobbly situation because it's going to make one more square to Neptune. So we're not really out of the post-retrograde weirdness until about January 9th-ish, 9th, 10th. 
But I will say that next week, Mars enters Capricorn, which is going to help us so much. It's super powered. It is a goat on a mission. It is going to help us to accomplish whatever it is we want to accomplish in the first month of the year. Things get really good come mid January. So just to note that I hope we go into this year, especially into the first couple of days of January, the last couple of days of December, first couple of days of January, still slowly. It's good to go way down and uh, uh, come back up. I was going to say submerge, but come back up in a way that feels like it's not too quick of a rise. Right? So Mercury stationing direct doesn't mean we get back to work on January 1st necessarily. It means that we're slowly pivoting. We're taking our time. We're noting that things are still going to be a little foggy, a little hazy. We know that by the 4th, things will start to pick up a little. There'll be more clarity available, much more. So also enjoy this week as it helps you to get lost in ways that are really helpful. It's important that we have a moment to delve into our fantasies, to lose the plot, and to be able to discover something through the course of getting a little derailed. This week we'll definitely try to do that. I don't know if it'll succeed for you personally, but if it does, see if there's something interesting that happens when you allow yourself to not be so linear about it all. And I hope you have a little time off this week and you're allowed to do some of that puttering, meandering, wandering around. Thank you all so much for leaving us reviews in the app store. I wanted to leave you with this one called Current Sky. You need this app five. I open the Chani app every week. I've learned so much and it's given me a new vocabulary for things from the past that I simply didn't know how to parse. It's like I've discovered an ancient map with practical guidance that's relevant for today. This app transcends anything woo-woo. It's like having a wise friend see your struggles and offer you considerate feedback for the journey that you can implement on your own time whenever you're ready. Sending you so much love, many, many full moon and cancer blessings. I hope you feel very full and overflowing. Bye for now.